Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Some controversy yesterday about a vulnerability in VLC CERT Bund, the German CERT did warn about what it called an unpatched vulnerability in VLC. Now VLC recently released some patches, but it did not include a patch in this update for libebml which was the library vulnerable to the problem that was identified by CERT Bund in its advisory and also published as a CVE by MITRE. Well, it turns out that VLC actually does include a patched version of this library for at least a year. So uh, this is really an issue that has been taken care of quite a while ago and should not be a problem problem in any recently shipped version of VLC. So in other words, well, it was already patched. So that's why there is no new patch for this problem. Now, the only scenario that may still expose you to this vulnerability, even with an up-to-date version of VLC, is if your Linux distribution did include the out-of-date version of lip EBML. And in this scenario, yes, uh, the proof of concept uh, videos that were published for this vulnerability will at least cause VLC to crash. And Inteaser has discovered a new version of the Watchbog cryptocurrency mining malware. Now this is a botnet that has been going around for about a year and it uses your standard Linux vulnerabilities like Jira and the like in order to compromise systems and install its cryptocurrency miner. What sort of caught Inteaser's attention is that the latest version of this particular malware is now scanned for the RDP protocol. And of course, you know, with Blue Keep, everybody is sort of waiting for the big bang here to happen. And initial reports about this version of that watch bar kind of sounded like uh, there was already sort of an exploit in this bot. Well, uh, there's no exploit for Blue Keep in the latest version of Watchbog. Instead, it's really just yet another scanner that scans for vulnerable systems. So it kind of looks like they may be building a target list in case they come up uh, with a working exploit for this vulnerability. But right now, nothing really to worry about too much. And talking about Linux botnets, Trend Micro is reporting about yet another botnet that's trying to exploit the Elastic Search vulnerability from back in 2015. This is a very actively exploited vulnerability, so a little bit surprised that there are still systems out there that haven't really been infected by multiple pieces of malware yet. This latest attack is installing a backdoor, possibly according to Trend micro to turn the infected systems into a DDoS botnet. And talking about competing malware, this malware will also try to remove some other sort of competing malware, in particular cryptocurrency miners from the system. And if there is uh, some universal truth in software development, it's probably the fact that cryptography is hard and something you really sort of have to do by the letter and be careful about reading man pages and do it just the way the people who wrote these libraries intended. Now, one problem that's coming up often in modern web applications is signed JSON objects. Uh, if you're not familiar with JSON, it's essentially a snippet of JavaScript that represents some data. And of course, if we wanted to use for authentication, or if we just want to protect the integrity of a message for some other reason, we need to digitally sign it. 
And talking about indicators of compromise, we usually deal with technical issues like hashes of files and IP address and the like. Today, we do have a blog on the IEC website by Xavier about whether or not we should include people or probably better user IDs in this particular scheme. Because well, uh, there are certain user IDs that are much more likely going to get attacked than others. Uh, Xavier here brings up an example of info at an organization that saw its share of interesting malware attacks, but also user IDs that should or should not ever be used to log in remotely to systems. Again, some of these default user IDs are sort of subject to being brute forced. Uh, so that's why you probably do want to keep a close look at them. And well, uh, take a look at Xavier's diary from today for more details. And well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.